everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. In today's video, I want to compare two medications, lorazepam, also known as Ativan, with clonazepam, also known as clonopin. Now, before I talk about the medications themselves, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Now, I've put together some slides to go over this information. So let's just jump right into it. So before we get into talking about both of these medications, I just wanted to quickly show you a diagram or an image of what these medications may look like. Now keep in mind that they, the shape uh, may change for these tablets, especially for Ativan. Sometimes they come in a more elongated shape. But in general, lorazepam on the left, you may see in more of a white color. And clonazepam on the right, you may see in more of an orange color. Um, like I said, both of them can come circular, or you may see them in different shapes, depending on uh, what country you live in. So the first thing to discuss in terms of the difference between these two medications would be the pharmacokinetics, which is what the body does to a medication after you take the medication. So two of them I want to talk about are time to peak concentration and elimination half-life. So the time to peak concentration, which is the time that it takes for the medication to reach peak concentration in systemic circulation, um, for lorazepam would be about two hours for the oral tablet. For clonazepam, it would be one to four hours for the oral tablet. So you can see on average here, it takes longer for clonazepam when compared to lorazepam to reach that peak concentration in systemic circulation. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about is the elimination half-life, or usually just known as half-life. So this is the amount of time that it takes for the concentration uh, in systemic circulation to decrease by half. So for lorazepam, this would be 12 to 14 hours. And for clonazepam, this would be 30 to 40 hours. So you can see that clonazepam lasts a much longer time in systemic circulation. The next thing I'd like to compare between these two medications would be the side effect profile. So starting off here with lorazepam, some common side effects would be asthenia or abnormal weakness coming in at 4%, dizziness coming in at 7%, sedation at 16%, and 3.5% of patients may experience unsteadiness. Some serious side effects would be metabolic acidosis, coming in at less than 1%, delirium, and depression. Comparing that now to the side effects of clonazepam, some common side effects would be ataxia, coming in at 5 to 30%, coordination problems, coming in at 6%, 8% of patients may experience dizziness, while 37 to 50% may experience somnolence. 25% of patients using clonazepam may experience problematic behavior, 8% may experience upper respiratory infections, and 7% may experience fatigue. Now, some more serious side effects for clonazepam would be depression, coming in at 7%, suicidal thoughts, which would be associated with that depression, and respiratory depression. We're now going to look at some uses and dosing for lorazepam and then compare that to clonazepam. I've chosen four examples for each medication. So starting off with anxiety for lorazepam, the initial dose would be two to three milligrams per day given orally divided into two to three daily doses. For maintenance therapy, we may see two to six milligrams per day, again orally divided in two to three daily doses and the dose range for maintenance therapy would be 1 to 10 milligrams per day. For alcohol withdrawal syndrome, we may see 2 milligrams orally every 6 hours for 4 doses, then 1 milligram every 6 hours for 8 doses. For insomnia due to anxiety or situational stress, we may see 2 to 4 milligrams orally at bedtime. And for status epilepticus, we may see four milligrams intravenously given slowly at two, millig two milligrams per minute. And then they may repeat that dose in 10 to 15 minutes if needed. Intramuscular dosing may be used for this situation, but IV dosing is preferred. We'll now go over some examples of uses and dosing for clonazepam. So in panic disorder, the initial dose would be 0 0.25 milligrams orally twice daily and after three days, they may increase the dose in increments of 0 0.125 milligrams twice daily every three days to a target dose of one milligram per day. For social phobia, which would be an off-label indication, using it as monotherapy, we may see an initial dose of 0 0.25 milligrams per day orally uh, and then increase to a mean dosage of 2.4 milligrams per day. 
The range here for social phobia would be 0.5 to 3 milligrams per day at week 10. For myoclonic seizure, the initial dose would be up to 1.5 milligrams per day, orally divided in three doses, and the patient may titrate with increases of 0.5 to 1 milligram orally every three days to a maximum, again just in this situation for myoclonic seizure, to a maximum of 20 milligrams per day. For sleepwalking disorder, which would be another off-label indication, we may see 0.25 milligrams up to 2 milligrams orally at bedtime. We're now going to compare the availability of lorazepam and clonazepam. So lorazepam, I should start by saying, would have a generic as well, but I just put down these three examples. So Ativan would be available as an injectable solution at 2 milligrams per mil and 4 milligrams per mil. And then, of course, the oral tablet at 0.5 milligrams, 1 milligram, and 2 milligram. Lorazepam Intensol, the oral solution, would be available in 2 milligrams per mil. And Lorazepam Novo Plus, the injection solution, would be available as 2 milligrams per mil and 4 milligrams per mil. Comparing that now to the availability of clonazepam, so of course the generic medication, the oral tablet is available as 0.5, 1, and 2 milligram. And the oral disintegrating tablet would be 0.125 milligram, 0.25, 0.5, 1 milligram, as well as 2 milligram. For the brand name Clonopin, uh, the oral tablet, we may see 0.5 milligrams, 1 milligram or 2 milligram. Now just to finish off this presentation, this isn't really comparing the two medications per se, but this um, does pertain to both medications. I just wanted to take this opportunity to share some points from the black box warning for benzodiazepines. Uh, so quickly, use of benzodiazepines and opioids may result in profound sedation, respiratory depression, coma, and death. Limit dosages and durations to a minimum required. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of respiratory depression and sedation. The use of benzodiazepines exposes users to risks of abuse, misuse, and addiction, which can lead to overdose and death. The continued use of benzodiazepines may lead to clinically significant physical dependence. Uh, an abrupt discontinuation may lead to withdrawal symptoms. So I just wanted to put this out there in case some, some of you guys are using benzodiazepines. Um, I've used benzodiazepines myself, haven't had issues as long as you follow the instructions by your physician and try to limit that dosage to the minimum. Um, but I just wanted to throw this in there as a good opportunity just to share the black box warning with you. All right, everybody, that's all we're going to talk about today, comparing lorazepam or Ativan with clonazepam or clonopin. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, remember you can like the videos, share the videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. Good for today. Take care.